A map of London, at last. Let's see, the district of Whitechapel. I found the map, Holmes, and I was able to locate the Whitechapel police station. Congratulations, Watson. Come, the game is afoot. You can read the article to me on the way. We have arrived, Watson, in Whitechapel. Not very bright, and what cold! Brr, a typical London morning. Come, Watson, let's find this police station. Well, this station isn't very well kept, I say. It's a local outpost, Watson. The daily tasks that confront these constables are not the easiest, and they are poorly paid. Gentlemen, welcome. Hello. I would like to speak with the Chief Inspector, if you please. Constable Humphreys here. I am the only one in at the moment. Uh, what do you want with the Chief? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I am... Sherlock Holmes? The detective that I read about in the papers? Well, that's a treat, that is. You come about the Buck Road case, have you? Indeed. We... Not at all. Uh, we were just passing by chance. You say that there was a crime recently. You don't know. You must be the only folk in London who haven't heard. It won't be long until you find the culprit, no doubt. Nothing is less certain. Suspects, zero. Clues, zero. It's not good for us, especially not in this district. Listen, this isn't what I came here for, but if I can be of service, in a confidential capacity, of course, if you can entrust me with a copy of the preliminary reports, I could study them and return later with my conclusions. Hmm. It's just that these are official documents. I can't take a decision like that without the inspectors. The sooner we know the facts in the file, the sooner we can be of help, my friend. Say, so, if you are Sherlock Holmes, you can find anything, isn't that true? With your magnifying glass? Footprints? My performance is often embellished by my biographer. Oh, good. Good. I will give you the reports, but could you do me a small favour first? During my rounds, I dropped a leather folder containing some papers. Uh, nothing of importance, but it's a big mistake. I would go looking for it myself, but I am stuck here on duty. I must have lost it near the seedy boarding house not far from here. Left when you leave the courtyard and left again in the lane. Perhaps you could go ask around. We shall see what we can do. Are we going to go look for these documents? Why not? It'll give us an occasion to take a tour of the district, Watson. Got a shilling, Gov. Excuse me, my good man. Now nah, time to chat, I've got business, got it. Excuse me, my good man. Now nah, time to chat, I've got business, got it. Pardon me, but can you give me some information? If it's to file a complaint, you should go to the station. Excuse me, my good man. Out of the way, I don't like the look of you. Excuse me, my good man. Out of the way, I don't like the look of you. Good day, sir. You wouldn't happen to have seen a leather folder on the ground around here, would you? Good day, gentlemen. Finley, caretaker of this building. Here to serve. And yes, less than an hour ago. But some of the local urchins picked it up and God only knows where it might be now. That's unfortunate. This police bag contained documents that the local police will miss. Your inspectors? Not at all. I am Dr. Watson, 
And this is Sherlock Holmes, the detective. Sherlock Holmes, the great detective. You must be here about last night's murder. Have you discovered the identity of the poor woman? Indeed, I'd only to read the papers. Mine is dated from this morning, and it does not say who it is. I'm not really engaged in this case, but if I can help the police, I will do so willingly. Oh, to be sure. I've been told that Inspector Aberline is in charge. A very capable man. So, according to you, I have no chance of finding this folder, then? Indeed. But I, on the other hand, should be able to find it. Do me a favour in exchange. A vagrant comes almost every night to sleep in one of the nooks not far from my windows. He coughs, howls, sometimes even sings. He's quite hefty and I don't dare approach him. I've lost three tenants because of him. If it's you who speaks to the police, they will take this matter more seriously. Tell them about the captain. They'll know who you're talking about. In the meantime, I'll find your police bag. Let's go to the police station. So, gentlemen, have you found my police bag? Not quite yet. Do you know a vagrant who goes by the name of the Captain? Captain? Yes, an old sailor, strong as a Turk and tattooed from head to toe. The drink has turned him into a derelict. He appears to be causing some problems for the caretaker of the building at the end of the street. What do you want us to do? Every night, stairwells, halls and porches become public dormitories and people don't only come to sleep. I believe this man has a niece who puts him up sometimes. Her lodgings are in Commercial Street, right after the alley with the boarding house. You won't forget my folder, will you? Do you believe this woman will agree to have her uncle stay with her? No idea. Oh well, let's go see her just the same. This is where the niece of the captain must live. Good day, miss. Would you happen to be the niece of the man known as the captain? Oh, yes, that would be me. What has he done this time? He isn't... Oh, my God. I'm on my way. Miss, we have come to ask if you could have your uncle come live with you. He sleeps under the windows of a boarding house. Causes the caretaker no end of problems. I know. I've lodged him for a while, and he was the same here. My landlord made me kick him out. I'm ashamed, you know. I never should have, given the state of his health. He coughs day and night. Miss, we have come to... I know. There might be a way to calm his cough. I am a doctor. I could examine him. He went to see a doctor at the clinic. But the medicine costs too much. I can hardly pay my rent. We will see to it. Where might your uncle be found? I don't know. He must be in the vicinity, but I don't know exactly where. We will find him. Holmes, this is serious. Find an alcoholic in Whitechapel? A needle in a haystack would be easier. Come, dear doctor, let's trust to our lucky star. Moreover, we also have our informers, remember? Are you referring to those brats to whom you are always giving charity? Exactly. My secret police. Some of them must surely roam in this area. It suffices to find them. Hello, young man. How are you? I recognize him. It's the lad who sells newspapers, who is always calling outside our windows at Baker Street early in the morning. Hello, Mr. Holmes. It's a treat to see you again. What can I do? Would you happen to know an old sailor who goes by the name of the captain, a poor man who hits the bottle a bit hard? Of course, Mr. Holmes. He's there at the end of the street. Round to the left he is. But be careful, he can be a tough customer, that one. Very good, my young man. The doctor will give you a little something. Watson? 
Huh? I say, Holmes. Is he always such a skin flint with you, Miss Elms? Well, thanks to you, Miss Elms. Anytime you need me. Excuse me, my good man. Le leave me alone. I can hear someone coughing more than is natural, Holmes. Yes, Watson. The poor man cannot be too far away. Got a shilling, Gov. Hmm. I have nothing to ask. Batty Street. Batty Street. Excuse me, my good man. What? I know you. Batty Street. If, in order to listen to us, this man imposes as condition that we find his pet cockroach, uh, there will be another murder in Whitechapel today, Watson. Yours. Ah. He is in a critical state, Holmes. He has barely a month left. Is there a way, dear doctor, to ensure that this last month passes in silence? Really, Holmes, sometimes you... Oh, really? I will make note of some medicine to get immediately that will relieve his pain. Very well. I will locate an apothecary or a clinic. Hmm. I have nothing to ask. This building is a clinic. Good day, sir. Dr. Gibbons, you aren't from around these parts. Indeed, Doctor. It is for someone from your neighbourhood that I am here, though. His doctor asked that I acquire some medicine on his behalf. I have the note here. Dr. Watson? Not from around here, neither. This medication is quite dear. Certain documents are necessary to obtain them for free. I don't have it. You'll have to accept my spare change. Will it be enough? Enough to relieve your patient for a month. Would you like me to make this prescription available after that time? According to Dr. Watson, that won't be necessary. The possibility of a recovery? A definitive one, yes. There, sir. Thank you. It's rather quiet here. 
An unusual chain of events. The majority of the people hereabouts went out last night to see the great fire at the warehouse. The patients that I was minding and my staff were no exception. The former were dramatically healed and the latter ended up sick. And with the murder last night, most of the people who weren't working wandered over to the scene of the crime. Their little aches and pains will wait until tonight or tomorrow. A squalid murder, it would seem. Just like what this area has become. My thanks, Doctor. Not at all. Here is the medication, Watson. Is our man movable? He should be able to stand in a few minutes and will no longer be suffering from his cough before long. Consider the affair resolved. Accompany him to his nieces while I return to the boarding house and then join me at the police station. Let's return to the boarding house. I have good news for you, Mr. Finley. We have sent the captain to stay with a relative and he shouldn't bother you for a while. I also have some good news. I have your police bag. Thank you. I bid you good day. Oh, it was nothing. Tell me, one of my wife's friends lost... Another day, Finley. Another day. Let's go to the police station. Are you sure it's the police bag that you lost? Yes, but someone attempted to force it open. They didn't succeed, but now the lock is stuck. Perhaps you could... Hmm, let's see. All done. Ah, uh, a big thank you, Mr. Holmes. Think nothing of it, my friend. So, the reports. Why don't you wait till the inspectors get back? You would certainly learn more. If I wanted to meet the inspectors, I would have done so. So, give me the preliminary reports, and above all, do not mention my visit to anyone. Is that clear? Sure, if that's what you want. Here are the reports. Thank you. Have you obtained the preliminary reports? Yes, we'll read them on the go. Let's to the scene of the crime at Bucks Row, Watson. But what are all these people doing here, Holmes? Apparently they came to see the scene of the crime. What about us? Aren't we going to see it? We will return this evening, Watson. The circumstances shall be ideal for carrying out our little experiments. Well, Watson, we are at the scene of the Polly Nichols murder. Imagine the victim lying at the spot where she was found and try to discern all of the clues we can. Watson, you are a writer. I am therefore entrusting you with our deduction board. It will help us to establish certain facts. Understood, Holmes. Let's look at this poor woman more closely. A small pool of blood, six inches in diameter.
The throat was slit from left to right. There are two incisions. The throat was slit from left to right. There are two incisions. There is a bruise on the left cheek. The tongue is swollen. There is a bruise at the level of the right maxilla. Let's look at this poor woman more closely. The body was lying on its back, legs straightened slightly apart. The skirt had been lifted up to the middle of the body. The left hand was touching the barn door. The body was still warm. Let's reread the preliminary report for the details on the wounds inflicted upon this poor woman. There is a black bonnet near the left hand. The body was still warm. Let's re The body was still warm. No marks on the ground. The ground is muddy. No marks on the ground. The ground is muddy. No signs of blood. No signs of blood. No signs of blood. There is a black bonnet near the left hand. No marks on the ground. The ground is muddy. There is only one street light lit on this street, Watson, and this spot is particularly poorly lit. This spot is deserted, Holmes. The prostitutes only come here to exercise. Well, Watson, we have found all of the possible clues, I think. Uh, we will now attempt to recreate the scene of the murder. Come closer, Watson. I have to make you up. You are joking, Holmes. I feel ridiculous, Holmes. Now, Watson, come and stand here in front of me. You shall play the role of the poor woman and I shall play that of the murderer. Let's try to reconstruct the facts to ensure the final result corresponds indisputably to the way that Polly Nichols was killed.
No, there is no reason the murderer would be positioned like this. The grip would be awkward. This position is a possibility. The murderer would have used his knife in his right hand. Plausible, but not likely. I hope that, as with the real murder, nobody had to witness all of that, Watson. If the murderer used his right hand to stride his victim, there wasn't much room. The murderer had enough room to inflict the wounds to the neck, and these wounds suggest the left hand was used. No, I don't think that things went like that. The murderer didn't attempt to stab his victim in the stomach. The murderer had enough room to inflict the wounds to the neck, and these wounds suggest the left hand was used. No, had the victim had her throat slit while standing, there would naturally be If the killer positioned himself to the side of the victim to slit her throat, regardless of which hand he used, he would have... This position is unlikely. The murderer had enough room to... If the killer positioned himself to the side of the victim to slit her throat, This position is unlikely. This position is unlikely.
No, had the victim had her throat slit while standing, there would naturally be blood on the walls. This position isn't very comfortable either. Yes, it's quite possible the events occurred like this. My dear Watson, now that we have found all of our clues, nothing remains but to subject them to our most likely hypotheses in order to deduce the facts. The victim was most probably dead before being laid down. Once the heart stopped, gravity drained the body slowly, not in a heavy spurt that would have stained half the street. Thank you, Holmes. I understand why you told me not to change clothes. Do you realize that our behavior didn't alarm anyone? The victim's ordeal was even more discreet. By acting in silence, we have confirmed something. The crime definitely took place here. The victim and her murderer were able to come here without making any noise, and afterwards the murder took place without the slightest cry being uttered. Come, Watson, let's go home. We have spent far too long in this sinister alley. And so, my dear Watson, the day and night which we passed in Whitechapel were enlightening, weren't they? An adventure that I most certainly will never relate, to be in the skin of that poor woman. I prefer not to speak of it further. But have we really learned anything about the murderer? Obviously a man, given the necessary strength. We have little to go on, at least no more than the police. But in my opinion, Inspector Abeline has a trick or two up his sleeve. No, I want to talk about the facts and what we can draw from them. We know where the crime was committed and under what conditions. I would like to ask you about the possible motives for the crime. According to you, Watson, what could have pushed the murderer to act in such a way? Revenge, Holmes? Revenge could be a possible motive, but with one small reservation. We have reason to believe that the victim considered her murderer to be a typical client. A personal drama. Love can certainly lead to many a drama, but we have to consider the fact that the victim didn't know her attacker. Hmm. Theft, perhaps. I have a hard time believing that someone would attack poor Polly so fiercely just to rob her of a few coins. Homicidal insanity, Holmes. It is indubitable that the man who did this to Polly Nichols is not of his full senses. Elementary. Very well, Watson. I think that we've exhausted the topic. Take a rest and we'll speak again later. Ah, 
it would seem that the investigation is advancing, Holmes. Yesterday's star said that a suspect is in the hands of the police, a man with a rather sinister reputation. I was about to join you in your optimistic outlook until you informed me that the good news came from the press, Watson. But surely they wouldn't invent the fact that the police are holding a suspect or the acts that are attributed to him. You will have an exact answer to these two questions in less than 50 seconds, Watson. Pardon? Enter, Inspector. Good day. Dear Watson, allow me to introduce Inspector Aberline. Inspector, Dr. Watson. Inspector? To what do we owe the honour of your presence, Inspector? I heard that the two of you made your way to Whitechapel a few days ago. Your arrival, you are aware, coincides with a very serious affair which our police service is going to great lengths to solve and which is creating strong tensions in the area. Pardon me, but haven't you arrested someone? A certain leather apron? Absolutely not. The man who hides behind this name is indeed being actively searched for by the force. Besides, nothing at the moment suggests that he is the Bucks Row murderer. There, you've been enlightened, Watson. Now it is our turn to answer Inspector Aberline's questions. Indeed. I will be brief and precise. Do you intend to investigate this case, or have you already started? It is to be of service to a friend that I went to Whitechapel. We did, out of curiosity, familiarise ourselves with the preliminary reports, and we made our way to the scene of the crime. Our conclusions are slim, as are the clues. Having not been officially appointed by a client, I believe that my intervention in this business will end there. Very well. To be frank, you take the weight off my shoulders by distancing yourself from the case. Our image isn't very good, to say nothing of what the press puts us through. Thus, if overnight they found out that you were on the case, people would turn against us. And they would pest me, overwhelm me, and finally make me out to be responsible for the inevitable failure such a scenario entails. Neither you nor I wish for this to happen. I know that your time is precious, Inspector. I will send you a note regarding my conclusions shortly. With pleasure. Gentlemen? Do you think that he will find the murderer? The chances are slim to non-existent. It is seven days now, short of a confession from the murderer himself. And you will not go further? You heard the Inspector Watson. My presence in Whitechapel would hinder, which doesn't mean that we will drop the case. How is that? The Inspector spoke of me, but not of us. It is you, Watson, who will lead the investigation tonight. It is you who will bring to the police station the little note that I will write regarding our conclusions. Despite the late hour, there is nothing to stop you from making inquiries about this famous leather apron while you are there. 